Hi, I'm Rezo and welcome to my studio in North London. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about my track Unexist. It's a DB tune off of my last EP. Um, just going to sort of go through how I came up with it, I suppose, and try and make some sense of my mental arrangement because it's at, currently at like 208 channels. As you can see, a bit of a mess. Um, for this tune, uh, like most tunes, I generally just start with a beat and a sort of bunch of sounds really. I think I started this one with uh, a massive patch. I think it's this one. Oh. So yeah, I was just messing around making this patch. Uh, you know, pretty straightforward stuff really. It's uh, using one of the weird squelchy, whatever that waveform is in massive. And just adding different filter types to it. Like I really like the the band reject and notch filters. And it's all about assigning those to like a certain macro control. Generally just the mod wheel. It makes it sound like um, adjusting the kind of filter cutoff and the bandwidth. And if you just kind of, it's essentially just a like trial and error that I find and just messing around with it until it sounds good. So this one, it's just, like you can hear like like that open it up and um the thing about that waveform is like when you move the pitch up it kind of you can hear it doing that sort of faster lfo almost even though it's not on an lfo and uh yeah just sort of playing around with that and making that sound musical so in the context of the tune i just made it do that you know sounds a bit weird on its own like together with the whole tune, sounds like this. You know, and on that, I think there's a bit more automation, like you can see, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten plugins on there. Um, classic, wow, you know, a Doge favorite. Um, just again, doing a band reject, just adds more movement to the sound, like if I play it without it on. You can sort of like the clean sound without any of the plugins. Sounds like this. You know, it's kind of a bit weak. If I start adding them one by one, distort it. More movement with wow. And then just kind of going through EQing, more distortion, another wow. Uh, ozone, just for the limiter actually, just sort of, you know, cheating a little bit. More, more uh, EQ, just like bringing out and trying to cut out certain sort of trouble spots I always found. Find between kind of 200, it's bad. Burb, just to kind of make it spacey. And then another limiter, because you can never have too many, you know. Uh, I've layered that with a sub part, which is just a plain like square waveform with like just nothing going on. It seems to be low pass. And then uh, just kind of, I don't know, like I find with my tunes, it's always a bit of a puzzle. It's kind of like I'll have individual sounds like that. And then, layering up like I made this is like a re sound running through lots of different kind of filters like the ring shifter and verbs again and stuff um, and I always tend to like I think that's the original sound you know and then it's like right bounce that one down using the bounce regions kind of bounce in place feature of logic going through and then sort of I keep We'll just keep bouncing sort of various versions until I get to like the final one I'm happy with, like that. Um, it's kind of seems kind of unorganised, but it's not just. I have to keep the sort of effects chain really on different channels. So I like bounce it one time, bounce the second one, bounce the third one, and get to the final one of the sort of what I'm happy with. Um, like that's the thing about Logic Nine. It's made it quicker for me, and I think in Logic Ten as well. Like the bounce regions thing, it used to take me a long time to get the parts I wanted down because I'd have to constantly be like bouncing, import the audio file, whereas now it's just like, you can go bang, 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 bang. Like, and that's why it seems like there's a lot of channels in this tune, but there's not really a lot of it. It's just kind of signal processing paths that I do in a kind of ass backwards sort of way. Um, so initially I'd start, like the initial beat I had is this. And you can see it's just, you know, 
like kick, rim, little hat sound, other hat sound. Um, just put them together and that's all running out of like, I'll just run that through the ES624, you know, map the samples and they're all going out of whichever bus, like, I don't, I don't really have a strict kind of, I'm not particularly neat with my arrangements, I just kind of do it and for each tune it might be slightly different. I try and tend to stick to the same kind of pattern. I always seem to put my kicks down bus 10 as a side chain channel. Weird little things like that that everyone's gonna do. Um, but yeah, just kind of like, you know, there's a kick, there's a snare. Uh, going through a reverb. Okay, it's coming out of bus 14, going through into like a bit of multi-band compression and a limiter again, just to kind of get rid of the peaks and stuff. Um, and then, so I literally started with that and then started layering in all these kind of weird, extra weird little sounds that are just, you know, little shakers and little things, so kind of filling in the gaps of that beat. So together, it all sounds quite nice. You know, just like little, re like little reversey sounds, little clicky sounds. I don't know, like <laughs> making a piece of music really. Like that's, pretty much how I started. And then it's just layering, you know, the various baseline parts around it. Um, this, this whole tune really is just me doing loads of little kind of micro edits of stuff. So like taking the bass lines and just switching them up a bit. So like here, I think. Yeah, just like a little edit there. It's like, right, take the original bass sound that I made, you know, that. Done the patch. So that's what that's doing. And then bounced it a few times to get. Which, cutting that end bit and just distorting it and I think I've reversed it and I don't know it's kind of sometimes it's hard to remember because the whole bounce in place thing I'll just do stuff and you're like that sounds good I'm not particularly thinking that you know to remember it later it's just a thing you do it's just being creative with edits and trying to think of different ways to edit stuff using different effects that like I quite if I can find one so like this one I think <laughs> So that's just you, like, I bounce that again, but I think here, if you can see, just using the end verb in Logic, which is, you know, envelope reverb, um, it has that nice kind of delayed attack, you can set the tax and stuff, but I find just a really simple trick to make things kind of jump out in your mix and it's a really cool effect. It's just turning the mix up and down so you can hear it, you know, without it, but with, I just think that's a really nice little effect. Um, not entirely sure what I did. Yeah, reverse the front bit. So, you know, being creative with edits, trying to mess around and keep it interesting. Little subtle things, like that. I'm all about those little kind of subtle touches that just keep it going. Cause it's not, you know, the most upfront ballsy tune and it depends on the situation you're in, what kind of tune you're making. Like I quite like stuff that like a good roller, it just kind of progressively builds as it goes along. Like I think that's, a different, requires a different set of skills than just going like, where's the drop? Make it smash. Like those tunes are fun and I've made those tunes and stuff, but it's a different set of disciplines to make something that kind of rolls along. And if you can have a, take a simple premise and make it five minutes long by subtly bringing in different elements here and there. And you know, so you actually notice a different thing every time you listen to it, rather than it just going like balls to the wall smash. You know, there's a, there's a time and a place for those kind of tunes. But with this one, I just thought I will, you know, I want to make something that just rolls along nicely and just like slightly brings in different elements. So in terms of like trying to put them together, it is like a puzzle really. I'll just make the patches and then that's just, a lot of it is like trying to make them sound like they come from the same space. So using reverb and using EQ and you know, like you've got to use your ears and listen to it. I can't explain it any more than I just listen to it and you go through and you can use frequency analyzers to look and you can see where 
there might be trouble spots in the sound or whatever, but mainly it's just using your ears and listening to like, does that sound like it fits with that one? Does it feel right? And that's, I don't know, that's just kind of how I do it. I don't, you know, I think people rely on spectral analyzers and stuff a bit too much and they're good for like your kicks and snares and making sure it's hitting in the right place. But also, yeah, you know, it is music. You are supposed to listen to it. Um, so for example, here. So these two sounds. So obviously top layer, sub layer. Now again, it's just massive squares. It's just a saw, um, random squaring there, you know, low passed. And EQ'd again, like two EQs. If I take them all off, you can hear that it's, just, it's kind of a bit, it's a bit of a poxy sound really. It's not the greatest, it's just sort of that sort of squarey, sorry re sound. Now I'm using that as my sub part, low pass through there, EQ'd again to low pass, just to overdrive on it, just to give it a bit of a, you know, you can hear it's distorting a bit, low pass again. mixed together sounds nice so that second low pass is just to take it's just to take exactly it's just to get rid of that kind of harmonic that the distortion is presenting um like the thing with Reese's is they kind of have that weird it's like that you can ugh, I, I don't really know the technical template but it's like a cyclic kind of whereas distorting it just kind of evens out and it's working almost like a compressor and a limiter in a way and it just kind of makes the sound fuller and a bit fatter, but I just want to get rid of those extra sort of tones of distortion is putting on top of it. So you just low pass it, you know, like I can never low cut or or low pass and high pass stuff enough, really. Like it's a constant thing I find, like, you know, with the sub, uh, sorry, with this sort of mid range part, you know, just cut it there, cut it at a hundred and then start taking out sort of trouble areas, if I look on the, like you can see what it's doing a bit. Um, I don't know, just trying to kind of sculpt the sound a bit and make them fit together. I can't, I, I find it sort of difficult to explain, but it's just like, again, you use your ears, you know, you know when it sounds right. Having a sub helps, because you can hear where, like if there's any sort of erroneous low frequency parts coming through on your mid sound, but just laying them together and your brain kind of fills in the gaps. You know, and I just do, I do that with a lot of sounds. I, do, I very rarely tend to just have a, the, use the base of the actual sound. I always kind of low cut it and layer a sub part underneath it. Just cause it, you know, it's a, it's a standard thing that most people do if you're making kind of bass heavy music, cause you want your subs to be clean. Whether you're using a Reese part or like a square or a sine wave, it's nice to um, keep that separate. And it just makes sure everything hit and then you have more control over it like layering it with the kicks and stuff. Um, so do you choose your kicks carefully for that reason? Because you, you, you don't want your kicks too sub either. Choosing drums, I find, is one of those things where you can't have like the world's fattest subby kick drum and uh, the world's fattest sub because they're taking up the same space. So you have to kind of make concessions one way or the other. Now, a lot like you can get around it with side chaining. It kind of works better in that's that sort of classic sound, like a drum and bass thing, or you know, the classic kind of side chained electro house thing when that's taken to like extremes. Done subtly, it can be quite nice and it can just allow space in your mix. Uh, like I'm not a massive fan of side chaining all the time. I like to do it more of a sort of on purpose as an effect. Um, in this tune, I don't really think I've done any side chaining. I've just kind of. Like, the, the, the kick isn't making anything duck out, really. Um, if I look at the kick channel, I think it's that one. Yeah, so where have I cut that? So I've cut the kick at like 51 hertz there and boosted at about 72. You know, you can see, so it's like, right, it's got that kind of lower, not all like, almost subbiness to it. And then the kind of punchiness around 
sort of bringing up the 100 hertz bit and it just kind of sort of tailed off some at the top end so it fits in more with the rest of the with the rest of the beat and you know EQing it so it fits within the tune um but yeah like the, the sub part the sub parts will sit happily underneath that because I've cut you know you cut them at about sort of 70 hertz as well so you make sure everything's just in its right place like I think of it like a chest of drawers so you can't keep stuffing everything in the same chest of drawers. You have to, you know, the subs in the bottom and then you've got your low mids and your mids, highs, tops, and you've got to make space for everything and panning. And, you know, EQ is really, is really important for that. Um, it's not something, you know, there's no hard and fast rules. Again, use your ears. Um, I tend to just try and group stuff. I always will send my drums down auxiliaries. So, you know, you've got kicks, snares, and EQ them and stuff in certain ways. And then I always have, you know, four different types of reverb and delay and stuff just to add on, you know, doing what reverb does to what make things sound like it's coming from similar spaces or using it as an effect. Um, I always tend to group drums down to a single bus. This one's probably, a, it's not the greatest example, but as I say, it's different for every tune. It depends on the case and the tune you're working on, but you know, I'll have drums coming out of auxiliaries. I'll then group certain things to like a, a bus. I think, you know, kick and snare coming out of that, which is, I think, working as a side chain and like there's a couple of things there that needed side chaining. But then grouping them again to like with everything, including all the hi hats and the weird little percussion things, which as a you know, a, a small amount of like multi-band compression on it, just to kind of try and even it out. Um, sometimes you can do New York compression or parallel compression, you know, depending on what you want your beat to sound like, whether you want, you know, it's the, the way you do it is as much a creative choice as the piece of music you're making, I find anyway. Um, but so I have like drums in one group and then I'll keep grouping different things together. Sometimes I'll group like the kick and the sub together to make them kind of gel together a bit more. Sometimes all the pads, all the bass lines are going down one channel, which has been compressed. And um, I don't know, it's hard. It's, it, it all depends on the individual case. Like this one is quite, I've actually sort of done a lot less than I would usually tend to do, I feel. Um, I don't even know what's coming out. Let's have a look, see what's coming at the end. Hold on. Okay, so there's these drums coming out, you know, that's all those breaks. They were running through the same reverb, it's just a Rob Papen verb. Um, again, it's like Oxford limiter. I try to mess around with different limiters as well, you know, transient shaper, just adding a bit more attack and kind of taking off the end of the break really, like without it. Just hear it tightens it up a little bit. I was like, it's really subtle. It's like really subtle things like that I find with brakes because they always have extra air on them and stuff. Um, but yeah, just grouping them together and seeing what works. Really, I don't know. I don't really have any hard and fast rules. I'm sure some people have very stringent ways in which they group stuff and put things together. But I just kind of. You can get a bit bogged down in being like, I have to group all of my stuff together and I have to do this and I have to do this rather than just actually making a piece of music. And I tend to go more for like, well, I'll vibe it out and mix as I go and slightly do it different every time just so it kind of, just so until it sounds right, you know, and mix it as I go. So I like, with this one, I'm pretty sure I sat there with this loop. Going for God like a day, <laughs> just tweaking it and tweaking it and adding bits in and trying to make the little, like the little pops and clicks and finding, you know, also just trying to find the right samples. And so once I had that, and I had, and that's how it sounded, like while, when I was finished with it, and that's how it sounds, the, the finished tune sounds, you know. Um, I, I sort of cheated a little bit and I went through and I, where is it, I stuck, Ozone on top and used the overall reverb in Ozone just a little bit, 10%, just to kind of give it, 
as I put it on everything again, it's making it sort of gel because it's a spacier tune. Um, a tiny bit of that stereo imaging widening in, widening the kind of high mids. Uh, and oh, a little, this is wrong really, putting a bit of sort of limiting on the master bus really. Um, mainly just not really to limit, more just to kind of get rid of any sort of erroneous peaks. Like if I take it off, like it's kind of, you can see there it's sort of, you know, slightly peaking. Cheating with ozone, putting it on. Ah, it's good, it's, 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 it's capping it at that kind of, sort of minus two, which is something I try and stick to when I'm sending off something to be mastered. I won't just be like, here's a brick wall limited tune. Go for it, mastering engineer, because they can't do anything. So I, I try and give them at least like one or two dB so they've got room to maneuver. Um, you know, it's not about loudness at all costs really. Uh, but yeah, that literally was like, that's how it sounded. So then that's the main bit of the puzzle slotted in. So then I just try and fit everything else around that main loop. I've got it sounding exactly how I wanted it. And then everything else just fits in. So this tune does have a breakdown. And then the second half is completely different to the first half because uh, like for the first half of the tune, you know, it just kind of goes along, like rolls out. You know, bringing in little subtle little um, kind of art synth parts. And you know, fil again, like you hear filtered cymbals, um, little reversals, and stuff like that. You know, this has a breakdown. I think we get there. You know, it's quite mellow. It's sort of like it's almost like dark jazz in a way, just like those weird kind of dark introspective chords. Um, again, I spent. I think I spent a long time <laughs> messing around. Like it's just a kick drum doing. Like you can hear that kick pattern doing stuff but I spent about three hours just programming different kind of things for the kick to do uh, god it's like you know like nerdy stuff but it's little things like that I find that kind of make the difference. It's like, just take, rather than just having a kick rolling along, to keep it interesting during the breakdown, you know, adding different effects to stuff. And just back again, you know, bounce regions, bounce a thing, adding effects on. So, you know, just there pitch shifting it, using the ring shifter, and just trying to, again, be creative with edits and make it sound interesting, but still simple, if that makes any sense. Um, so yeah, the, you know, it goes along and then get to this part. And all of this part is just very edit heavy drum break chopping. Um, it's something I enjoy doing and it's kind of, you know, I played drums for 20 years so I just kind of enjoy programming drums quite a lot. Um, let's have a look what I've actually done. So I think the, the kind of main break that's using uh, throughout this part is... You know, layered with the, like these different ones, there's like, it's a drum fill. And whatever this is. Just layering up lots of different parts. Um, again, I just took the break. I can't actually remember what the name of the break is, but like chopping it up manually, which is a mission, and layering, putting it in ES624 on a multiple, on the multi output. Just going through, you know, sliced up. And layering, uh, sending the different bits to different outputs, so like three and four for the kick drum, main for the hats, five and six for snares, etc. And then essentially just going on a flipping massive MIDI mission. If I look at that. Yeah, just programming drums like that. That's what it looks like, just endless. And it's not something that's, I don't just sit there and go bang, 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 and program it in. It's a lot of trial and error and sort of tapping on my knees and knowing what I want to do and then program it in and sort of messing with velocities. Like, You know, it's not something that's quick, but it's something that 
having 20 years of playing the drums has helped me out to do. Um, and what about swings and stuff? Do you apply them there or, or do you do that by hand as well? Um, this, this, uh, this isn't swung particularly, this one. This is just quite straightforward. You know, like applying all the velocity. If I do do a swing, it depends. Sometimes I will just go in and manually nudge stuff like ticks. And it's quite fun just, you know, using your ears, trying to make a groove that sounds fat. Sometimes I'll just use, you know, in Logic, it's got like, I quite like the ENF swings because they're really pronounced swings um, in Logic. They sound quite good. Uh, anyway, as this progresses along, I just went, it's just massively drum wank. Like, went through and. Yeah, like another break in there. I don't know. You know, again, just the same thing. Take the break, chop it up. Uh, multiple. Completely changing the sounds there, like switching up the complete drum heads as well. So that's taking, like that's taking multiple different breaks. So that I think this, like I've got, a, you know, God, where's the folder? Um, you know, endless samples of just rubbish, but some good stuff. Um, just taking them and chopping them up and putting them in and like logic is kind of half got there where if you, you know, right click on something and it's like, uh, where is it? Convert to new sampler track so you can do that. And then it'd be like, how do you want to do it? Transient markers, da -da -da, and it'll create as a new, but it's not, it's not the best at picking the transient markers. So I, I still will go in to the waveform and, you know, individually chop out the breaks, as it were, like via the transient. Like I've chopped up that tambourine from a break and then, um, yeah, so anyway, chopped up that one and then layered it with an amen underneath. You know, classic stuff that's, yeah, essentially just high passed. Uh, what's on there? Here, yeah, my old favorite, the transient shaper, just to kind of give them, just to give it some more attack, really. But yeah, just layering them together so they sound You know, sounds crunchy. The Amen's giving it that kind of ringy top sizzle. That's quite nice. But then the original break has got that kind of fat, crunchy snare going on. Um, I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain. I just kind of, you just listen and think, oh, that break sounds good. And just using your ear and I can just kind of pick the ones that I think sound good that go together. So as it progresses, I just went more and more sort of in depth with the drum edits and just kind of tried to make that, you know, that's kind of a drum, th f drum funk kind of thing, people like Fanu and Fracture did, like drum and bass guys, where it's, you know, chopping up breaks, bread and butter thing. So I just kind of, yeah, went with it a bit more. Sounds has gone a bit weird. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, yeah, just going along, progressing, trying to make it interest. You know, make it sound like someone's playing drums and going a bit crazy on a drum kit. And just you know, it's, it's jungle. Just chopping up breaks, <laughs> programming them, laying them with bass, and just kind of making it, it rather than relying on the bass line as such to provide the energy, it's the drums. And it's more of an old school way of thinking. Like a lot of stuff now just seem to rely solely on the super hype bass sounds. And, you know, again, there's a place for that, but I also like this kind of thing. It's like, I can get energy from just hearing someone going buck wild on a drum kit. So yeah, that's what I sort of try to achieve. This tune is uh, Unexist. It's on my Pulse Code EP that came out on Hospital. Um, yeah. I, that's kind of just sort of a few ideas of how I go about making them really. Mm -hmm. 